Welcome to Science Snippets, a video series by Agents of Change in Environmental Justice, where we talk to fellows about their recent work and research. Today we'll be hearing from Mariah Edwards. She's an environmental health scientist at George Washington University and the Environmental Defense Fund. Lariah is also the first author of a new paper in the Journal of Exposure Science and Environmental Epidemiology called Phthalate and Novel Plasticizer Concentrations in Food Items from U.S. Fast Food Chains, a Preliminary Analysis. The goal of this study was to measure concentration of phthalates and these novel plasticizers, which we refer to as replacement plasticizers, in fast food items and food handling gloves. So a bit of context, phthalates and replacement plasticizers are industrial chemicals that are used in plastic products to make them soft and malleable. We know from the available literature that exposure to phthalates is widespread among the U.S. population, and we know that phthalates disrupt hormones in humans and are linked to a long list of health problems. Uh, phthalates are well studied, and some of them have been banned from use in certain products, such as DNBP and also DEHP. So replacement plasticizers have been used in place of some of these banned phthalates and products. These replacement plasticizers, such as DEHT, are different from the banned phthalates and other phthalates in general. And these replacement plasticizers are not well studied. So it is unclear if they are linked to health problems. Diet is the primary source of exposure for many plasticizers, including phthalates. This is because these chemicals um, can migrate out of the materials they're used in, such as food packaging or food handling gloves, and get into the foods that we ingest. So because fast foods are highly processed, packaged, and handled, they may be important sources of exposure for these chemicals. So we collected 64 fast food items from six different restaurants. We collected hamburgers, hamburger patties, cheese pizza, chicken nuggets, french fries, and chicken burritos. We also collected three pairs of food handling gloves from three restaurants, and all of the restaurants were located in San Antonio, Texas. We analyzed these gloves and the foods collected for 11 chemicals, eight of the phthalates and three of these less studied replacement plasticizers. So overall, we detected 10 of the 11 chemicals in sampled foods, including fries, chicken burritos, cheeseburgers, and pizza. Generally, foods containing meats had higher levels of chemicals than other foods. We also detected replacement plasticizers in food handling gloves that are collected from the same restaurant we sampled the food items from. So for the well-studied phthalates, DNBP and DEHP were detected in 81% and 70% of sampled foods respectively. We also detected the replacement plasticizer DDHT in 86% of foods. We found that chicken burritos and hamburgers at the highest levels of DEHT and gloves from the same restaurant had also had high levels of DEHT. So this suggests that gloves may be one source of plasticizers that we found in these sampled foods. So because we found that uh, these phthalates and replacement plasticizers were abundant in prepared meals at these popular fast food restaurants, it means that people can be easily exposed to these chemicals just by eating these foods. And two of the phthalates, DNBP and DEHP, were detected in over half of samples food, and these chemicals are linked to reproductive problems. So that's particularly concerning. We also found this less well-studied replacement plasticizer DEHT at high concentrations in certain foods and gloves. This means people are exposed to this chemical, even though the chemical's impacts on human health is poorly understood at the moment. It's also important to consider these results in context of health equity. So reports have shown that certain racial and ethnic groups like non-Hispanic Blacks are more likely to eat fast food than other groups. And this can be a result of many factors. Um, for example, predominantly Black neighborhoods have higher amounts of fast food restaurants than white neighborhoods. And this can be attributed to um, historical racial residential segregation. So because of this, these factors, this may lead to exposure inequities among certain groups. And this is concerning because these groups already have higher levels of other chemicals from um, other environmental chemicals from other sources. So this is a concerning, uh, can something concerning to think about with our results. So in terms of this research in this, uh, this research in particular, since this was a preliminary analysis, we didn't include a lot of different restaurants. We only included six. 
Um, we used market share data to pick the most popular US fast food restaurants, but it would be ideal to do this study on a much larger scale with more fast food restaurants and in more um, diverse geographical area because most of our restaurants, all of our restaurants are from one city. We also didn't, didn't collect gloves from all of the restaurants. So subsequent studies could do that by collecting more of the gloves and maybe some of the packaging from the restaurants. Um, and thinking more broadly about our results and next steps, we need more research on to understand their chronic exposure to these replacement plasticizers. So how does being exposed to these replacement chemicals like DEHT, um, how do these chemicals affect human health on a long-term scale? Um, our preliminary work suggests that these replacement plasticizers may also act as endocrine disruptors, so they may disrupt hormones in humans like the well-studied phthalates do. But more data is needed to determine what these chemicals actually do in terms of human health. And finally, on a more like broader, even broader scale, thinking about policy, stronger regulations would be helpful to keep these chemicals out of our foods. And although some of the phthalates are banned from toys and other products, these chemicals are still being used in packaging materials and our data shows that these chemicals are still being found in these fast foods.